Hello, and welcome back to Revision Joe B. Last episode, we did about crime and punishment in early modern England. Now, we're going to be doing about it in industrial England. Really great episode, guys. Just stay tuned. And it's 1750 to 1900. So, um, as always, start off with a quick overview of the period. Not so quick, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the Industrial Revolution took place in the 18th to 19th century where there were many scientific advances and technological improvements. And um, some farming changed to many people that used to have jobs in farming, and then they got jobs in manufacturing. Um, like, in there were factories and foundries which were produced. A lot of them, a lot of them were made, which led to mass production of products, so more products were made in less time. But more power was needed, which led to more mining. So there was a lot more mining and there was a lot more people working in factories. So people started to move away from farming. As before, we saw the peasants all farm the land. Now, a lot of people are going to be working in the factories. So there was more voting. Um, it was still just men based on wealth. So it was still very only um, decently wealthy men could vote. So it was 2.5 million people in the country in 1867 had the right to vote. So it wasn't even all men, and of course we know women didn't have the vote yet. The people who we considered peasants in the last thing, 95% I believe it was medieval, they would now be living in slums as the population was growing, so there were loads and loads of people all tightly packed into one place. So there was a fast spread of illness because of how many people, overcrowding, and that those things led to bad public health. The poor people were paid badly and they had few rights. As we know, they could not vote. So, um, one good thing did come from the bad public health, though. Like, in 1848, they set up the Central Board of Health to improve conditions and give out resources. However, this organisation had limited power in this period. So, basically, the Great Reform Act in 1832 was about um, representation of different people around the country. So MP, so every large industrial town was given an MP. They elected an MP, which was their voice on the national scale. It was branching out from London, like all the large towns would have one. So that next, urbanisation. So there are more towns and urban areas, which means... People moved to them for wealth. Like people would say, "Oh, you know what? You get a lot of, a lot of money in urban areas, a lot of wealth." Although that wasn't true, as there were crowded, unsanitary conditions, and women and kids had to work. Um, prime example of um, the industrial times being books such as Oliver Twist, which show like the impact on young children, poor people in that time. So next, overview of the period: transport. So new bridges and roads were created. And ports were created, which allowed trade with other countries. As we know at this time, this is when um, the explorers went out and started sailing to different places. And the empire was set up, and which established a lot of trade routes on its way. So it really opened up our country to the rest of the world. And brought new goods and commodities. So now, as we always do, let's go over to crime and criminals. So um, the amount of professional criminals rose. So, that was people who were criminals as their job, not just petty thieves. They actually did this criminal business full-time. So, this was especially bad as there was not much science to catch them. Like There was no DNA testing until after this time, but we'll get onto that in the next video. So, um, also the population increased. So, in 1750 there were 10 million people, and in 1900 there were 42 million people. Um, the, this um, led to a higher population density, which made crime more likely with things such as pickpocketing and houses were close together, so people were more likely to burgle from their neighbours. And if you think about it, if everything's close together, you can hide really well. Like, getting some historical hide-and-seek here, that would have been the best. And some places in this period, there were rates of crimes increased rapidly, so between 1810 and 1820. Also, the Napoleonic Wars happened, and when they ended, ex-soldiers came back to 
find they didn't have any jobs, so they decided some of them decided to turn to crime. That's one reason why they were more criminals. Also, new crimes due to new laws. So, avoid paying a train fare, employing kids under nine, and keeping a child from school. So these two, employing kids under nine and keeping a child from school, are sort of about child welfare, which was the Enlightenment. They thought new ideas of how we should treat people. Still not give everyone the vote, though. <laughs> so, but that's besides the point. So, um, also avoiding paying train fares, because trains were only recently introduced. Probably sometime in this time period. So in 1829 was the setting up of the Metropolitan Police Force, which was in London. It was created by Robert Peel, and due to this, more crime was recorded. Also, banks and warehouses became, well, became created. And that, as we know, they store a lot of money and valuable goods, which made them ideal for thieves. As with many other times, 75% of crime was theft... Um, there was still some violent crime, but not that much. Theft because of needing to survive, and it was mostly low-value opportunity thefts. So this was mostly the poor people striking back, getting some money because they didn't have enough. Ha ha ha, the peasant empire strikes back. Okay, let's move on. So, now we have enforcing law and order. So as we know, in the last one, um, jails were set up. But now there are official prisons. They were run on a local level. It was an uncommon, uncommon, an uncommon form of punishment. And prisons weren't that good as there was a lot of disease there. You had to pay for your stay. So there was a lot of debt. And um, guards were paid by the people who stayed in the prisons. Guards weren't paid by the um, by like some higher up thing. Therefore, guards would treat... Um, People staying there differently depending on how much they paid them. And the fact that people get into debt, that would just get them into more prison. Getting them out of prison to get them into prison again for debt just didn't make much sense. So then um, some other people came along. So um, John Howard, he was a um, prison reformer. In 1774, he, um, he was one of the main people who um, got the Health of Prisoners Act put forward, where guards were paid a salary. Then there was Elizabeth Fry. I'm pretty sure she's on a um, pound note. Not sure how much. But she was also a prison reformer. Um, she got many policies about reforming... What policy? About reforming female prisoners and teaching them skills. And she went on about the bad conditions. And due to these two people and many others, the Health of Prisoners Act, different things got a lot better for people in prisons. Which some may argue is wrong, but... Yeah, and then um, another person called um, Sir John Onesiphorus Paul in um, 1791 was um, created the um, Gloucester Act because he was the um, person in Gloucester, um, which made it in prisons that people were allowed to exercise, they were allowed to practice their religion, there were individual cells and classes were separated. And all of these ideas lead more to the idea of rehabilitation. Someone goes in prison not just to be punished, but to change themselves and to become better individuals. So now let's move on to punishment. So some of this I'm unsure of how I put here, but here it says causes. So I'm assuming this is causes of crime, but I just couldn't fit it there. So causes of crime. Social causes as poverty causes crime because of hardships faced by the poor. Aha, yes, so 1842, Edwin Chadwick. So Ed, Edwin Chadwick, basically, he published a report of the sanitary conditions of um, of the labouring poor to show what they have to face on a daily basis and how this could lead to crime, them trying to escape from it and them getting paid so less for doing such a physically demanding job. So another cause is religious. So many people said that there was um, lower church attendance and that would lead to um, a fall in moral standards and alcoholism went up also because of this. Other reasons for um, other causes for crime, which some people said in this time, were biological. So they said many people had um, criminal traits. They were born criminals. You know, certain groups of people, oh, you're one of those, you're probably a criminal. Another idea that stems off biological is phrenology, which is a... Um, which is the study of the skull and showing that it can show personality. We obviously know now that to be untrue, but back in the time they had some weird methods. 
Okay, so other bits here, punishment. So the crime rate increase, that's not just because it increased, it didn't increase that drastically, it's just fear of it increased because there was public pressure for them to stop crime. Like newspapers and all the media were created in the, between this time period. So people began to learn about crimes and realize there is a lot of this stuff in the world. So yeah, they just didn't realize before how much of a massive impact it had on society. We live in a society. So the Enlightenment, um, people decided that um, punishment should get the right crime. And due to this, the pill pillory was abolished in um, 1837 due to its consequences. Many people froze and died whilst in pillories, which is kind of takes away the whole humiliation aspect and makes it a lot more extreme and basically the death penalty, which just so happens we're moving on to next. So the death penalty was used for murder and attempted murder. And in this time, they tried to make it more humane by using hanging as it gave a quicker death and the end was instant, the end of life was instant from the fall to cause as little pain as possible to these people. So in this time, they decided we should be nicer to people, technically. So it was used a lot less in this time. And the bloody code in the 1700s, which meant um, people were a lot less likely to convict people as less people did crimes that would lead to the death penalty. That was abolished in 1820 to 1830 for being too harsh. Took a long time to figure that one out. Anyway, um, the death penalty shouldn't be used as entertainment, they decided, so public executions ended in um, 1868, so they decided we're not putting this in public, it's making the people go a bit evil. So then capital punishment, there was amendment Amendment that it shouldn't be done in public, and that's basically all this, because capital punishment is the death penalty. So that, we just did punishments, we just did industrial crime and punishment, 1750 to 1900. That was fun. Alright, goodbye. Get back to working in the factory. <laughs>